Cheritishmash. Tonight, it's all Greek to me. Day 21 of Fun with Cheese. Um, tonight, our friends of the show include uh, the great outdoors. Uh, this coming, uh, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear a lot of gobbling out there and just wanted to give you a reminder that there's lots of great opportunities in the outdoors to uh, go turkey hunting, uh, enjoy that activity, and uh, get out and uh, slay a gobbler or at least hear some. I've been told that I jump around a lot in the uh, turkey blind, so I'm not the best turkey hunter at it, but I do enjoy being outdoors. Uh, our other friend of the show tonight, I uh, wanted to give a shout out to Land O'Lakes. Uh, it is a 1957 producer member cooperative that per, that processes over 12 billion pounds of milk annually. Our shout out tonight goes to Mr. Dave Bangard, who sits on the uh, board of directors for Land O'Lakes and spends a lot of time away from his farm and family and definitely appreciate all the work he does uh, for Land O'Lakes and, and all their partners, uh, including their parent company of Senex and Perina, if you've heard of them uh, as well. Um, so tonight's show, it's all Greek to me. All things from Greece are really good, including Windex, which if you remember back to my big fat Greek wedding, this stuff takes care of a lot of things, including aches and pains, sore throats, um, itchy scalp, stuff like that. But this is a minor thing. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to a couple different authentic Greek restaurants where the uh, grandmother's in the back making the dishes, and it's really a cool experience. Uh, we've had saganaki, which if you have never had saganaki, it's a flaming Greek cheese where they dump ouzo or another liquor on top, light it up, and you say, opa! And... Uh, that's a really cool thing. It's, it's a fun appetizer at Greek restaurants. Uh, they have baklava, which is a Greek pastry. Uh, frappe, if you're into the drinks and having a frozen drink with a coffee and things like that. Euros, which we have at the fair, and those are a lot of cool things to have. Um, that's actually lamb meat. Lamb is a very popular meat in uh, Greece, as well as putting feta cheese in with it. Moussaka. It's a Greek lasagna with lamb, ground lamb on the bottom and then layers of eggplant and Romano cheese on top. It's really a cool dish, but you know, it's all Greek to me. We don't have a lot of Greek restaurants around here. You have to go to a lot of bigger cities to find those. Um, but tonight, tonight, tonight is feta. Feta is a wonderful, wonderful cheese. You can't get away from this stuff. It was made in Greece over 8,000 years ago. It has stories that go back to the Odyssey where the Cyclops actually carried milk in a sheep's stomach across the lands. And when he got to the place, he's like, this is curdled. And like any other cheese mistake, you're like, oh, I don't want to throw this away. So he tried it and it was good. But uh, it is most popular. And if you're a purist, and I'll go back to where these cheeses come from, um, if you're a purist, it has to be made of sheep and or goat's milk. Now, you're saying sheep or goat's milk, that's disgusting. But you got to remember, outside the world where this stuff was, was popular, was founded in, in Greece and in the Middle East, that sheep and goats are the number one animal, farmed animal in the world. And so we use them for meat, we use them for milk, we use them for all these wonderful things. If you're wearing um, a one of those crazy boots, I forget what they're called, a Anyways, they're the sheep boot, um, but the, it's an inside out sheep. They're made in Australia. I can't remember the name of it, but you'll probably post it on here later. But um, so the first mention actually of real feta was in 1494 when Pietro Corsola, an Italian traveler came across and he saw them putting the actual cheese that they made into a salt brine because you have to remember there's no refrigeration at that time so we got to put the cheese into some sort of um, receptacle where it's going to uh, be preserved and that salt keeps all the different bacteria from making this cheese go bad uh, and making it mold so they had it in 1494 but it was just referred to in 1494 it's, it's cheese we say cheese you have cheese and we have cheese but in the 17th century it was called feta which actually in Greek translates to slice, okay? So feta is a pretty awesome cheese. Uh, it's very salty. Um, 
and it's put in a, in a salt brine so you can imagine the, the texture and things and it's white so if you remember back to yesterday i even said in german that a natto is yellow but this is not colored um the europeans protected designation of origin or pdo I mentioned this a couple different times before say that if you're going to have real feta it has to come from the isle of or macedonia thrace or other places in greece and you're only allowed to blend 30% goat's milk into it. And the goats have to also pasture on the same lands as with their, uh, that their sheepish friends are hanging out on. Um, and so in order to call it real feta, it has to be that. If it's outside of that, then they just call it white cheese. Still feta, but it's white cheese. Here in the U.S., we don't have as many goats. We don't have as many sheep, although they do make those in different factories and stuff like that across the country. But... Our feta is generally made with cow's milk. Um, what do we do with feta? Well, feta comes in a salt brine, and I don't know if you can see it in here, but I'm going back and forth, and the brine is still there, the salty brine that it's packaged in. And we use it on salads. We use it in cooking. Uh, we use it on a dessert. My wife loves to make baked pear, and then she puts feta over it, and then drizzles honey over that. That's her favorite thing. But her ultimate favorite thing to do with feta is to take your chicken in a biscuit, put this in the microwave, heat it up, and eat feta on chicken in a biscuit. It's sweet, it's salty, it's delicious. Now, because it's a pickled curd, we put it in a salt brine, we call that pickled. It's a pickled curd. It requires a very special plant in order to make it. And once you know, locally, 17% of all the feta in the United States is either packaged as uh, its real name or packaged or at the manufacturer's or packaged as private label. So if you see a Greek name on it or something in the grocery store, there's a 17% chance that if you're eating feta in the country, it's coming from a little place called Nasonville Dairy, which is a mile away from here. 17% of the nation's feta comes out of that little plant in Nasonville. Um, the Hyman family serves up several different varieties there. They put it in oil, they put it in uh, cucumber dill saw, or dill uh, flavorings. Um, they add different spices and things like that, but many different flavors, and they've gotten many, many different awards at the national level for their feta. Um, this low fat cheese is salty to the bite. Um, and you can imagine that it either as very young, it's very crumbly, or you can get feta crumbles, uh, or if you age it, it gets very creamy, um, and or it, or it can range from crumbly to creamy depending on the age that we have. Um, this one has to be a crumbly version, but it's in a block. We serve it up as this. You can get it in crumbles in a container. You can do whatever. Can I take a block and make it into crumbles? Absolutely. Take your knife, choppy choppy. Um, crazy things about feta, I know we can't travel, but last year I was at Epcot Center in Florida, Orlando, imagine that, and my wife and I were going through the Greek area there, ordered up a salad that they had, it had olives, it had um, chicken, lettuce, uh, sun-dried tomatoes and things, and they also had feta on it. I came back and I asked my friend, I said, is this your cheese he's like yep we take care of nasonville takes care of uh, all of disney's cheese so next time you're at disney and you go to epcot remember that wisconsin has um, an influence in the world's cheese in the hall of nations there at epcot so remember feta is good feta is awesome feta has a lot of different uh, varieties and flavors and uses and feta is milk's step into immortality. You guys stay cool, save for 22.